Homecoming festivities here at the University Center on Southeastern Louisiana University's campus for our second, the second half of our doubleheader here tonight. It's the Lady Lions against the North Oak All Stars. The starters tonight for the Lady Lions look like they're going to be number 12, Dickie Patterson, uh, number 20, Tom Coleman, number 22, Ken Johnson. Number 23, Gary. Number 23, Gary. I'm sorry, Gary Bootwell. And our last starter looks like he'll be 55, Howard Raphael. Our starters for the Lady Lions tonight will be covered by our co-host, Miss Sherry Abel. Hi, welcome to the University Center. It's great to be here with you here for the homecoming festivities. It's been a lot of fun today. Now let's talk about the Lady Lions since we're getting ready to tip off the Lady Lions versus the North Oak All-Stars. And we want to thank North Oaks here in Hammond for their uh, continued support of SOU Athletics and specifically for putting together this team and sponsoring them to give us the chance to play an exhibition team. The starters for the Lady Lions tonight, beginning with that forward. Junior from Albany, number 15, Amanda DeKaiser. Uh, also, we have starting number 33, Nicole Williams. Number 44, Kim Gordon. Number 32, Brandy Hayes. And number 20, Tanya Gates. She'll be playing at the, at the uh, guard position. Sherry, you're the senior women's administrator here at the athletic department at Southeastern. Tell us a little bit about what that job entails. Well, as senior woman administrator, I'm responsible for the female athletes here on the campus of Southeastern Louisiana University. And it's a great job. We have a great bunch of athletes. We have approximately 90 female athletes here, and, and I'm responsible for taking care of things like gender equity and Title IX. And additionally, uh, I also handle the marketing efforts for all 15 sports that we have here. Well, we recently completed our volleyball season here at Southeastern. Um, can you touch on that a little bit and tell us a little bit about what went on, the Lady Lions volleyball team? The volleyball team had a pretty tough season and they ended up, uh, I can't remember their record exactly, but they did a, a pretty good job this year. We're a building season. Coach Ronnie Armida uh, had a new assistant this year, Dana Lani, and uh, they had a great, great season. Finished, I think, um, in the middle of the pack in our new conference, the Southland Conference. We touched on that in the first half of our doubleheader, the Southland Conference, and some of the things that that means to Southeastern, the old rivalries that it brings back with Northeast and Northwestern, some of the, some of the rivalries that have been played. As, our, as long as Southeastern's had an athletic program here, and we're getting ready to, for, the, for the start of the game, and, and as you can see, uh, my co-host for the, for the men's game, Mr. Dwayne Donald, number 35, is on the basketball floor. You, he mentioned earlier that he had to leave. Uh, with about five minutes left to go in the game, and he kind of left me here alone. But we'll, we'll talk bad about him when he's playing and, and see if that helps. Uh, the frosty-haired guy that threw up the ball was uh, the referee, and looks like the North Oak All-Stars control the tip. Dwayne Donald's got the ball out front, and he's looking to get it inside against the Lady Lions. Dickie Patterson with it, looking, looking. That Lady Lions defense is tenacious, and Dickie with an air ball. <laughs> North Oaks clears the rebound inside. Foul on the play as Howard Raphael attempted the shot. He'll get two. Amanda DeKaiser with her first foul, first team foul for the Lions. Tell us a little bit about how this game came about, Sherry. Well, Coach Snyder went out looking for a uh, men's team for the women to play, uh, and that's kind of the move in female and women's basketball today is to get play against bigger and stronger players to improve your players and so uh, he hatched up the plot uh, with Dickie Patterson who he <laughs> plays basketball with on the side and so they decided to uh, put together a team and get it sanctioned by the NCAA so they could play them and so that's basically how it all started. So they actually had to get their team sanctioned. North Oaks Medical Center is 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 what we're calling the North Oaks All-Stars. They're the sponsor of this of this team and this game and uh, they do a great job out there at North Oaks and they actually had to go out and get a sanction from the NCAA to allow these guys to play in, in this game against the Lady Lions. That's impressive. I didn't realize that was part of, of the uh, logistics in uh, getting this underway. Uh, Amanda DeKaiser just had a blocked shot. <laughs> Amanda is uh, is one of our, our local uh, 
Lion Cager. She's from Albany, just, just right down the road. She played at Albany High School and did a great job there at Albany and came on strong last year and has done a really good job. Dwayne Donald just threw the ball away. That was, that was his first turnover of the night. And uh, looks like they're going to give him another chance. Open layup, and he blew it again. <laughs> foul is by Tanya Gates. Um, she fouled at that particular time. Uh, Kim Gordon made the shot on the other end of the court. Kim was also a, a newcomer to the Lions last year, and this is her second year. She's just a sophomore, and she's been a great contributor, and we look for great things from Kim. Dwayne Donald at the line, shooting two. It's up and in. He's got it. Dwayne, the former athlete here at Southeastern, one of the, actually the only one out there, it looks like, for the North Oaks All-Stars that was a basketball player here at Southeastern. The rest are pretty much business people, doctors. Uh, we've got a senator as an assistant coach over there on the bench, and we'll get into some of that later about who these guys are. Uh, but right now, it looks like uh, Gates is bringing the ball up the floor, and uh, Lady Lions are working their set offense. Passing to Kim Gordon, the ball's coming across. Basket. Dwayne Donald with the basketball, bringing it up the floor. Dickie Patterson bobbles the ball out of bounds, Lady Lions basketball. Sherry, this is homecoming week here at Southeastern, and we've had a ton of things going on. Uh, we recently crowned a new homecoming queen at the halftime of the guys game. Tell us a few things that have gone on that maybe we didn't hear about so far in the, in the papers and, and on the news and, and whatnot. Well, the homecoming activities began with the tip-off celebration, and there's another three-point yeah, basket. Amanda DeKaiser with another basket. Uh, the homecoming celebration began with a tip-off celebration in the universe, in the Union, and a great celebration beginning uh, with the Lion cheerleaders, the pep band, the Lionettes, and uh, we had a fashion show and just a great event for us. Drennenbach with the two. something about a bonfire or something. I'm not, what, something about a, two bonfires? Two bonfires. <laughs> not only did we have one bonfire this year, we had two. The first one uh, accidentally, <laughs> uh, the night before the real bonfire, and of course what was really interesting was about the time the Lions came home from a win was sent from Centenary, was about the time that, that bonfire, up. like, bonfire got accidentally started. <laughs> so that six calls had to rebuild the fire again. That'll teach them to plan early, you know. Forethought is not something that's that's encouraged among college students. I don't know why. We, we never seem to have a bonfire the day before. Anyway, why would the Sigtal build a bonfire the day before it was supposed to burn? They always get out there the day of and build it. They, they should know better. Well, the most interesting part is that they were supposed to be protecting it. Uh, but somehow or another, they went to get something to eat about 1 o'clock. And uh, like I said, it mysteriously went up in the air. Raphael with the basket. He's got three in the game today, and he's probably the leading scorer for the North Oaks All-Stars. And uh, Lady Lions bring the ball up the floor. Pass out in the corner to Garden. Up. No good. Out to Patterson. Patterson with the ball. Maybe. No. Yeah. No. Out to Donald. Donald on the line. Lady Lions basketball. Howard Raphael, who just scored that basket, is a doctor. He was born in New Orleans and attended Xavier University. Uh, he's practicing here in Hammond at North Oaks Family Medi Medicine Clinic, and we're happy to have him on the North Oaks team. Most of these North Oaks All-Stars, and, and we use the term All-Stars somewhat loosely, uh, <laughs> <That's correct. laughs> have, uh, have a reason for being on the team. Most of them are very big supporters of, of Southeastern Athletics, and in particular, uh, Lady Lions basketball. Yes, that's exactly correct, and of course, North Oaks does a great job in helping us out. Additionally, um, this is a big help for Coach Schneider as he gets a chance to look at his uh, players against bigger and better and stronger opponent and of course uh, well we lose that, that loosely as well I don't know if uh, if they'd appreciate us talking about them like this we'll use bigger <laughs> we'll use the term bigger and tall heavier heavier taller looks like the Lady Lions are doing a good job on their Dickie defense. Patterson with another miss <laughs> and Drennenbach with the with the put up but a foul they'll go to the line and shoot two as uh, as number well, he, I thought I thought he said 12, but I don't have a 12 in my book. Do we have a 12? That's yeah, number 42 in our book. That's number 12. Ah, number 42. Career. Let me let me change that real quick here. 
And Lance Creer is a 5'8 senior from Baton Rouge, Louisiana. She played her prep basketball at Woodlawn High School. She's been a great addition to the team. The Kaiser inbounds the ball. And Garden brings it up the floor. I'm sorry, not Garden. Um, On your gate. Gates brings it up the floor. All of my numbers are wrong. Every number I have is wrong. I don't know why they're wrong. <laughs> they're just wrong. Let's see. Gates is what? 24. Okay. I've got Gates as 20. 24 for Gates. We're having a great day here. Field on the ball. Gates back with the ball. Out to Garden. Is that Garden 44? Yes. Up. Got it. Brandy, Brandy Hayes with the basket. Brandy Hayes who played basketball also in Baton Rouge. Uh, Brandy is a sophomore as well, and she's been a great addition to the Lady Lions basketball team. Oh, uh, Dwayne Donald, three points. <laughs> Dwayne told me, Sherry, earlier, Dwayne told me he's going to, his, his, point total for this game would be three so he's just he's just matched what he told me he was going to score the entire game so if he gets anything else in the game we'll have to call it, we'll have to make him not count anything anything else that he scores we'll take off the scoreboard and that was a two-point basket by amanda de kaiser the foot must have been on the line it looked like a three-point basket <laughs> to me but you know the referee's no guess <laughs> Dickie Patterson has the ball out in front. Dickie's the local attorney, the counsel for North Oak. And that's how it all got started with this Dickie. Oh, okay. And Dickie throws it away. Another turnover. No, actually, it may have been tipped by one of the Lady Lions. Pass out to Dwayne Donald for three. Up. And he hit the backboard, but <laughs> that was about it. And we go the other way. Gates with the ball out to number 12. <laughs> I, I, I've got to, I've got to get a new book. All my numbers are wrong. Career. <laughs> I'm looking for my numbers in numerical order, and they're not in numerical order anymore. And we'll, we'll fix that. I'm sorry about the, that, that problem that we're having. Bootwell with a move to the basket, but it looked like he traveled. <laughs> We've got a, uh, a substitution. Miss Ola is in the game, number 25, Amber Ola. <laughs> She's another prospect from Albany, uh, recently joined the team, uh, a freshman, 5'4", into uh, her former teammate, Amanda DeKaiser. Whose number is correct, I might have. <laughs> that's one. Uh, we've got one that's right. <laughs> Bootwell with the ball again, in the inside, out to Dickie Patterson. Bootwell across the lane, didn't get it. Dwayne looking for three. Oh, and he got his shot blocked by the shortest girl on the floor, and then he fouled her. But they called a jump. <laughs> Dwayne Donald got away with one right there because he flat fouled Amber Ola. But in poetic justice, the Lady Lions get the ball by way of possession. <laughs> You know, Dwayne Donald's a great, great player, and he has a great sense of humor. You know, he was a coach here at Southeastern for a number of years before he went to the bank, and uh, and we're really, you know, he, he did a We're real job. proud of Dwayne. Yes, we are proud of Dwayne. He's a great friend, a great supporter of Lion Basketball and Lady Lion Basketball. Lady Lions working the half-court offense, and it's turned over. Dwayne Donald with the ball up to the junior member of the circuit, number 40, Billingsley, Paul Billingsley. Paul looks like he's 137, but he's only 24, ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> he's the team's <laughs> most seasoned player. It, but they say he's vertically challenged, and he continues to enjoy the game. And he turns it over. <laughs> Paul's a local attorney, and he lives in Hammond with his wife, who's a registered nurse at North Oaks Rehab Hospital. So, and they have one son, Wilson. So we're excited to have Paul on the team as well. Billingsley needs to wait till it stops rolling and pick it up. He's, <laughs> he's fumbling the ball around. And a timeout on the floor. We're going to take a timeout here from the North Oaks All-Star Game.
back at the University Center. 13-18 left in the first half of this game. The North Oaks All-Stars are down by one, 13-14. Lady Lions inbound the ball. Amanda oh, Amber Oli over in the corner. Three-point. No, no good. Off. Out. Dickie Patterson with the ball over to Dwayne Dahl as he brings it up the floor. And uh, North Oaks runs the set offense out to Donald. Donald with the air ball. That's, uh, that's one that hit the backboard and didn't hit the rim, and then one that didn't hit anything. When he, so maybe when he told me three points, he, was, he wasn't really lying. I hate to think that that was a true prediction, but it's not looking good for Dwayne right now. <laughs> he should have quit. He was, a, he, was, he was batting 1,000, and he's going 0 for 2 cents. So uh, he's down to about 30% from the, from the three-point arc. Lady Lions with the basketball working it. The uh, the North Oaks All Stars look like they're in a in a two three zone, so that that ought to make it a little harder for the Lady Lions to get inside, and it, they're going to have to rely a little more on their outside game. Looks like we've got a foul on number twelve, Dicky Patterson. His his first personal foul, uh, third I'm sorry, second team foul. Inbound it. Yep. He did play high school basketball in Lafayette, which he told me was a long time ago. Amber Ola with the ball out front. And Brandy Hayes with a shot and the miss. Donald with the basketball. Unfortunately, the lay lines look like they're a little intimidated by these bigger and stronger men. Uh, not Amber Ola, though. You saw her jump in there in front of Dickie Patterson and grab the ball as she drives I, to the basket. I saw Amber Ola play high school basketball at Albany, and she is not intimidated by anybody. Anybody. The one thing about Amber, when the ball is on the floor, she's down there scrambling for it. She's going after it. And into the game, our district attorney for Tangebo and Livingston Parish, Scott Perilou, number 11. Yeah, and everybody knows Scott Perilou's name these days is, of course, when you're district attorney in a three-parish area like ours. Randy Hayes with the basket. He uh, definitely is, is a name that's, that's out there on the front page every single day. And Hayes, one for two at the line. Sherry, earlier in the day, we crowned Miss Christy Brown, the homecoming queen for 1997-98, the Theta Phi Alpha sweetheart. That's correct, and Christy's an outstanding student here at... Southeastern. All of our um, homecoming court this year were newcomers to the court and are all scholarship students and uh, we were really excited about the, the quality of girls that we had uh, on the homecoming court and really excited for Christy and want to congratulate her. Well congratulations Christy on your crowning and your honor as being elected the queen of homecoming for Southeastern 1997-98. And that fouls on number 22 for the North Oaks All-Star. Uh, Ken Johnson. Ken, Ken Johnson. Not Stan Johnson. That's State Farm agent. Ken Johnson is... Uh, what, what does Ken do, Sherry? Ken Johnson. <laughs> Ken's on the bottom of the list here. We're going to take a minute, and there we go. We'll get to Ken. And Ken is... Hey, Ken. Uh, graduated from Southeastern Louisiana University with a B.A. in elementary education, and he is teaching at the Louisiana Technical College in, in Ascension Parish in Sorrento. Sherry, does that say 170 pounds? Yeah, that's <laughs> that, what it says. <laughs> that must have been a few hamburgers ago. <laughs> uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure. Uh, his, his, bio, his bio is very interesting, but his basketball background is very sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> and Ken set the inbound the ball. Scott Perley bringing the Scott ball. Scott Perley. Showing that he can also dribble as well as prosecute. <laughs> as I was talking to Scott last night, he, I, he said to me, I, I'm a better prosecutor than I am a ball player. Although and Perlou with a rebound. He just <laughs> rebound as he look at him hustle. Look at him, look at him hustle. And we have a backcourt violation. <laughs> Perlou with 110% there. The Paul Billingsley and the first. nimble Paul Billingsley was unable to come up with it. Yeah, but he was hustling, that's for sure. I'm not sure I'd want to be out there right now, my, that's for sure. I wouldn't want to be out there with those guys knowing what I've been saying about them, because <laughs> <laughs> they'd be talking about me. Yeah, when they watch this, they're going to definitely know what's going on. Lady Lions passing the ball around well, scored by Gene Credit. Gene Credit's the product of Redemptress in Baton Rouge. Dwayne Donald with the basketball showing you a little between the legs action and a push off by Dwayne Donald. Yes, 
in the face of Miss Amber Olaf. <laughs> and again, Amber is not afraid of anybody. She'll be oh, I think they got that foul wrong, too. I, I really believe that Dwayne gave her a little shove there, and uh, they called a blocking foul on Miss Olaf. That is her first foul, fourth team foul. Here with 10 minutes left to go, 10 minutes and 39 seconds left to go in the game. Uh, the Lady Lions lead the North Oaks All-Stars 17 to 14. And again, Carolou with the ball out front. And I'm sorry, Sherry, what were you going to say? I said again, we want to say thanks to North Oaks for their support and putting the game on the television. Olo with the shot. Off. Donald with the rebound. Tries to push it up. Paralu looking at it, looking for it, and can't quite get to it. Good hustle by Paralu. That was, that was, Dwayne's been off. Dwayne's been slightly off. Not only in shooting, but now in passing, and, and Gail Neal just jerked him. <laughs> and Gail Neal, uh, I have to mention that uh, Coach Neal is what I call him. Uh, Coach Neal was coaching high school basketball in Marpaw when I was playing uh, ball in, in high school myself, so that tells you how old I am. Uh, Coach Neal is coaching the North Oaks All-Star. <laughs> uh, he works here at Southeastern as well. Yeah, he works over in the continuing education department. Uh, Gail is, uh, I'll tell you a story about Gail. He was also my high school coach, Sherry. Uh, yeah, he did. He, co he coached me. Uh, in Maripo, we don't have a whole lot of students. And uh, we don't, as I mentioned earlier, we don't even have a football team. So basketball homecomings aren't anything new to me. But, uh, you know, with, with just a few students, we play from eighth grade. So we, he coached me in eighth grade and ninth grade and in tenth grade. He was my basketball coach. And, and then he left to, uh, to go to Denham Springs for a few years when I was, in, when I was a sophomore. Yeah, I tell you what, uh, Marpa was always a formidable opponent for Hammond High, for sure. We always hated going down to Marpa to play. That was a tough game to play in. Well, when you don't have football, you play basketball all year, and, and that's the only thing you have to hang your hat on. But back to the game at hand, we've got a file on our district attorney, and let's see if he objects to this. <laughs> No objection. <laughs> Actually, I think he's asking for a substitution. I think, I think he concurred with the call and has removed himself from the playing surface. <laughs> and Scott, we want to say, great job. Super job, Scott. Super job. <laughs> Lady Lions inbound the ball to DeKaiser with the shot, and it got it. Got it. Amanda DeKaiser with two. And that brings the score. Lady Lions leading by seven with eight minutes left in the first half. With the North Oak North Oak All Stars, if you just joined us, uh, Lady Lions basketball exhibition game here in the University Center for the second half of the homecoming doubleheader. Ambrola with the basketball out front, looking to get it inside. Lady Lions set the half court offense. Pass the ball around. Amanda shot, and one of her few misses today. Foul on Kim Garden, it looks like. Number 44. Yes, it is Kim. That is the fifth team foul, her first personal foul. And we've got a timeout from the North Oak All-Star Bench. I think they need a need a breath or two. So. <laughs> We're going to take a timeout here and take a breath or two ourselves as the lady as the cheerleaders come on the floor to to inspire the crowd here at the University Center at Southeastern. Uh, time out on Tangy Television, Channel 17. First Guarantee Bank is proud to bring you the 1997 Southeastern Louisiana University homecoming game. Center and getting set to get underway here. The North Oaks All-Stars set to inbound the ball. Uh, in this, our second half of our homecoming doubleheader, the Lions defeated Texas College, the Steers from Texas College, 129-94 earlier today, setting three offensive records. Uh, most points in the University Center with 129, uh, most assists with 37, I think it was, and most field goals made. 
three offensive records set here earlier today in the in the jungle, as they affectionately call it. And uh, second half of our doubleheader, the Lady Lions against the North Oak All-Stars. Eight minutes left to play in the game. The Lady Lions lead by seven, 21 to 14, as Amber Oli passes the ball around to eventually Amanda DeKaiser. Back up front, shot, got it. Nicole Williams. Nicole Williams, number 22. And there we go with our numbers again that we don't have correct. That shot was by Dickie Patterson from the corner. Three-point basket missed. Back out, rebounded. And that's John Drennan back with the rebound and the and the and the garbage bucket. Puts it back up and in. Ola with the basketball. And Patterson with the quick hands. Gets it out of bounds. Gail hadn't got up and, and, and uh, gotten upset yet. He, he's, he's mellowed in his, in his uh, elder se senior years or, or older, fewer, la later years. Maybe I should say later years. Well, maybe, I don't want to call him old. Maybe that's the, yeah, because he coached me. You know how that goes. Yeah, because if he coached me and if he's old, then... <laughs> Then that means I'm old. I think Gail, since he's been in education, uh, the Department of Education now here at Southeastern, that he has mellowed a lot. Ola for three and a miss. Long rebound out to Donald. Back and forth. Foul. Ola. Two shots. Probably a pretty good foul. As we all know, Dwayne Donald, the athlete that he is, would have made that probably with little or no problem. Uh, probably. <laughs> wise, wise foul by, by Amber. Back into the game, Tony Gates, get ready to come back in. Donald at the line, shooting two. First one is good. He could always shoot free throws, Sherry. He he was one of the one of the better front court players that we've ha we've had here in in the later stages of the of the southeastern basketball's career here. In the 90s, late 80s and early 90s, he was he was by far one of our, our better front court players, and then back court players. Also, an uh, excellent coach when he was here. That was my association with him. Was a as it was when he was a coach. Yes, he was. First as a graduate assistant, I think, and then as a then as a uh, an assistant coach with along with Ron Cox. He and he and Ron uh, were two assistants. Ron is the senior coaching member of the of the men's staff with six years. As you know, John Lyles is only in his fourth year and. Ron was here for two years before, and Donald, as we speak, Dwayne Donald with the with the lay-in. And he exceeded his three-point. Three yes, he did. He's he's up to six now. <laughs> we'll have to keep a running total on Dwayne just to see what he can do tonight. I want to talk a little bit about Coach Frank Snyder. Uh, Coach Snyder being here, this is his 13th season with the Lady Lions. As Kim Gordon goes up with a good move to the basket and misses. Take the ball away. Um, then Brandy Hayes scores on the rebound. Uh, Coach Schneider with his 13th year here at Southeastern Louisiana University, looking for another 20-plus win season. And I uh, want to congratulate Coach Schneider for his team this year. Uh, they had a win on Monday night against Texas Southern, a big win against Texas Southern. Did a great job. Uh, got some great play from his young ladies that night, Monday night. A lot of people don't know how successful Frank has been as a as a coach here at at Southeastern. He's got a career record coming into the 97-98 season of 401 wins uh, against only 257 losses. That's a over 600 winning percentage. That's that's fairly impressive for for the college ranks. And thinking that college coaches don't stay around too long, and in in most cases, the the average tenure I think I heard a few years ago at that point was about two and a half years for a college coach he's he's starting his 13th season he's been a fixture here at our Lady Lions basketball program and uh, we're very pleased to have him uh, Frank's doing a great job great person to work with works extremely hard with his players and uh, takes care of business the way it needs to be taken care of uh, that basketball was by Kim Gordon and we're expecting great things from Kim this year Kim contributed as a freshman last year, and, and we were able to pull out some key wins with her assistance, and so we're looking for Kim to really improve this year. It looks like she's going to really help out the team. 
Sherry mentioned to me earlier that there are only eight players eligible. Is that just for this game, or is that for the first half of the season? Uh, that's till we finish this first semester. We have uh, some players that are sitting out. The semester, not uh, the half. The first first half of the school year, not half of the season. Uh, after the first, when the this semester is over, we'll be uh, welcoming back Rosalind Penniman, who uh, will be a senior this year. Rosalind um, sitting out currently, and she'll be back in the lineup as soon as the semester is over. Rosalind's a senior, as I said, from Oxford, Mississippi, and a guard, and was a contributor last year in helping us out. Additionally, we have um, Michelle Ziegler, who's on the bench with an, a knee injury, and Michelle was expected to see a lot of action at the um, at the, at the forward position or to help out at center with Amanda.